So I've gotten a handful of questions on how to train some models for Sovitz SVC 4.0 for the version that I described in my previous tutorial. So this is going to be about that. Now, because training is a bit more niche and technical, I'm going to assume that you have some baseline competency with things like the command prompt. To start off with, system requirements are a little bit beefier than what is required for the base of its SPC install. You need a GPU with 8 gigs of VRAM or higher, and about 6 extra gigabytes of disk space, plus whatever space that you need for your dataset. Speaking of which, first thing to do, obviously, is to prepare our dataset. In order to train new character voices, you're going to need at least two minutes of hopefully clean and consistent voice data. You're going to have to format them all as WAV files and ensure that they are at most 10 seconds long. The more data you have, the better. I'm not necessarily going to take you through the process of actually collecting this audio and, you know, clipping it in something like Audacity or another DAW. This video will assume that you already have your data set ready to go. Now, if you're training voices for characters that appear in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the Pony Preservation Project already has a data set of cleaned, clipped, and transcribed audio, covering pretty much every single line spoken in the show, with a handful of exceptions. And it's hosted on Mega, you can access it through the link shown in the slide here. If this is your first time training, there are going to be some things that you have to download and optionally install. First thing is that you're going to have to navigate to the link shown on this slide in order to download some pre-trained models. These will serve as the basis for our training. You can technically not use them, but generally results will be better when you use a pre-trained model. So navigate to that page. The files we're going to be looking for here are d underscore zero dot pth and g underscore zero dot pth. Just click on the download icons and save them to a place of your choosing. We're going to come back to these files later. Optionally, if you already have a base Python installation on your computer, you can use pip to install TensorBoard if you don't have it already, which can help us monitor the progress of training. Now this next part is required if you installed Sovitz SVC through the setup batch script. If you set up Conda yourself, you already know how to activate your Conda environment. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the command prompt to activate the Conda environment that was set up during our Sovitz SVC install. If you're on Windows 11, you have this open the terminal option in the right click menu. That actually opens up PowerShell, not the command prompt. But the Windows terminal also lets you open up the command prompt in a separate tab. So let's cd into our install directory. And now it's time to activate our environment. So type miniconda backslash conda bin backslash activate dot bat. And now if you see base on the left side of your command line, that means that you're in the conda environment. We're going to take that window and set it aside for now. For this next step, we're going to provide the data set for training. So get that folder ready. In our install, we navigate into Sovitz SVC and then into dataset underscore raw. After this, we want to create a folder named after our character. In this case, Cozy Glow. I'm going to copy all of my dataset files into this folder. Note that the name used for this folder will also be used for the config and inside user interfaces, so please provide a sensible name. Now let's go back to our command line window with the conda environment activated. I forgot to record this step, but make sure that you've cd'd into the Sovitz SVC directory. We're going to run some Python scripts to preprocess our files. First, python resample.py. What this is going to do is resample our source audio files from dataset underscore raw into 44.1 kilohertz and move them into the dataset directory under Sovitz SVC for further preprocessing. Next, we want to run python preprocess underscore fless underscore config.py. This creates file lists used internally for training and validation, and also sets up our config.json to have the correct character name. Last thing we need to run is python preprocess underscore hubert underscore f0.py. This will pre-compute pitch and speech feature information for all of our audio files. After we have done that, it's time to go back to the pre-trained model files that we downloaded earlier. We're going to copy these into the Sovitz SVC logs 44k folder. I say copy because it's useful to keep a second copy of these files around, as the pre-trained model files will be altered during the training process. Then it's time to start training. We're going to run python train.py dash c configs backslash config.json dash m 44k. If everything has been set up correctly, training should begin in short order. Get ready for that GPU to heat up. 
You might run into this network notice here, I just allow access, I don't know what happens if you don't. Eventually you should start seeing epic messages like this. If you're not going to use TensorBoard, you can just leave this for 8 hours or as long as you want. But if you did install TensorBoard earlier, now is the time to open that. So I'm going to grab another terminal inside the Soviet's SVC directory. I'm going to run tensorboard dash dash log dir log slash 44k. Now on my system, it complains about having to be a super user in order to access the port for this. A way that you can work around that is to add the bind all option as well. If all goes well, it should give you a little URL that you can open in a web browser. This is going to open up a little web UI which we can use to monitor our loss values and speculate on what they actually mean. And it also allows us to look at some audio examples. Let's go begin. This time we're gonna win. No more so low. Cause this is the way to go. So you can use that to help you decide when to stop training. Speaking of stopping training and saving our progress, the way training works is that it saves progress in these checkpoints. And you can see that there's a special message here for saving. So here it saved the generator and discriminator checkpoints for a thousand steps. Now if we decide to stop training here by pressing Ctrl C, we are going to lose all the progress that we had after that checkpoint save. So here I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but I've cut off training at a thousand steps. One more thing that I haven't talked about is training a cluster model. So for those who have not watched the 2023 PPP panel, the clustering model file is an optional file that can be used in some interfaces to get better similarity to our target characters. Interface-wise, the option to use it is called either the cluster ratio or in Heisei, the character resemblance. But when we're training the model, we have to train the cluster model separately. In order to do that, when we're in our same conda environment, in the Soviets SVC folder, python cluster slash train underscore cluster dot pi. So this process is going to take a few minutes up to an hour depending on how big your data set is. When it's done, it'll produce a k means underscore a bunch of numbers dot pt cluster model in the same place that it saves the other Soviet SVC checkpoints. So in the logs 44k folder. Now what's nice about training the cluster model is that it's actually entirely independent of the main training process. What I mean by that is that you can do it at any point that you've finished all the pre-processing steps. So you can train the cluster model before you even start the main training or after the main training. Once we're done with training, the logs 44k directory will have all the files we want to distribute. It has our k-means cluster file, our d and g checkpoints, and our config. When you distribute your model, these are the files that you want to provide. You can zip them up and upload them to a cloud hosting service, or alternatively, you could upload them to Hugging Face. Once you've taken care of how to package and distribute everything, if you plan on training more models, you want to clean up after yourself so you don't screw up your training. In order to do that, just delete everything inside dataset underscore raw, dataset, and log slash 44k. And that's it, I'm just going to leave you with this little sample of the Kozaglu model that was trained in this video. Whatever happened to Duns? We need to bring Duns back.